Thanks, David. It took just 10 weeks of a legislative session, but for the relationship between legislative leadership and Governor Kristi Noem to deteriorate. Today, at a bill signing, the governor took some lawmakers to task for disagreements over legislative priorities. And that's putting the future of the budget and temporary sales tax cut in jeopardy. State House reporter Austin Goss spoke with the governor today in Mitchell. Governor Kristi Noem hasn't backed off a threat to veto the general budget or a temporary sales tax cut passed by the legislature. And Wednesday at a bill signing event in Mitchell, Noem doubled down on that threat. Last week, the legislature passed the budget and a temporary sales tax cut with veto-proof margins. But Noem says her concerns lie with what wasn't done for taxpayers. But the problem beyond that, looking at the budget, is how much more it spends above and beyond what we had in there for revenue that my Department of Revenue was able to put together and my budget and finance team. Uh, and it's ongoing commitments. So, you know, I really do believe that if they were going to spend that kind of money, that they surely um, could be palms up and say that the taxpayers deserve to keep a little bit of their money. Too. And Noam lays these concerns squarely at the feet of House and Senate leadership. She she took aim at both House Majority Leader Will Mortensen and Senate President Pro Tem Lee Schoenbeck. All Will Mortensen had to do as a majority leader is walk down those stairs. He said it takes two to tango. I was downstairs offering to help him get a permanent tax cut, and he chose not to. Late last week, Schoenbeck calling Nome the most ineffective governor he has ever worked with. She can't keep staff. She got these people from Iowa, or not excuse me, Ohio and Florida who have no clue about what they're doing. And, and so, I mean, it, you're, it's the people that you surround yourself with that will define your talent and ability. She has no talent to pull on. You know, that's the thing with this guy. You know, he can be your biggest fan one day and the next day 180 degrees the opposite direction ripping your face off. If you guys could see the text messages he sent me over the years, I don't know if the guy would ever get elected again. But it's political squabbles like these that could ultimately bring lawmakers back to the drawing board in a few weeks potentially forced to negotiate pieces of the budget with the executive branch. I know the Senate didn't want to do a tax cut. I did. The Senate did not want to do paid family leave. I was very disappointed that they didn't prioritize that, and they also didn't want to help foster kids. I would think out of all the things in this budget that they funded, they could have put families here at the top. Lawmakers will return to Pier for veto day on March 27th to consider any vetoes the governor might still make. In Mitchell, I'm Austin Goss.